Thomas Webster is a decorated Marine, an NYPD police officer of 20 years, a family man, and a patriot. He's a proud father of three. He served his country in the 1st Battalion, 6th Marine Regiment. Tom is known as a cheerful man, a respected pillar in the community, and he's known for his love of family. Tom was a decorated infantry man with three overseas deployments, receiving a slew of medals, ribbons, and commendations. Tom was a decorated NYPD officer who trained hundreds of recruits and served in prominent positions. And he's going to jail for 10 years for assaulting a police officer on January 6th. Tom turned down a plea deal. He was provoked and there was video evidence to prove it. So the government withheld Capitol camera footage until one week before trial. Thomas Webster was a disposable hero. The government used him. Um, he did uh, active duty as a Marine. He was a decorated Marine. He fought for this country. 20 years in an NYPD, unblemished record, outstanding American citizen, uh, just a great guy all around, but the government got its use from him. He was a Marine, he fought for this country. He was uh, an NYPD police officer, active line of duty. And now that there is no more use for him, all of a sudden he's going to jail for 10 years. It's, it's interesting that these men were trained by the government to fight against tyranny. And now that it's coming around full circle and these men are realizing that the government is tyrannical and they're actually exercising their First Amendment right to protest and petition the government, they're being persecuted like mad. On January 6, 2021, Tom Webster attended his first ever political protest. At 2 p.m. he arrived at the Capitol and he went over to the West Terrace where the crowd was told that there was going to be a speech. As Tom walked closer to the protesters, the reality of the situation began settling in. We're being attacked by our own country. We're being attacked by the police. We're being attacked by people that we back. And they're attacking us unprovoked. So you're walking around and you're seeing women crying. You're seeing fully grown men crying, praying to God. You're seeing people running around, wiping their eyes with tear gas in their eyes. You're seeing people who can't breathe. God damn it, we need them. Let's go, fucking shoot it. Go, shoot, shoot the fuck. The smoke grenades started coming down. The rubber bullets were shot. The tear gas was Something. burning. People who were covered in blood, who have rubber bullets in their face. This is what you were walking around witnessing in actual disbelief. Women being shoved, women being pushed, kids crying, people being beaten by police, people running around with blood on their faces. He was watching his fellow Americans literally being bombarded with grenades, with tear gas, with pepper spray, with rubber bullets, all of these being peaceful protesters. He sensed the terror around him, and it was almost like he felt he had no choice but to walk up to that gate. At 2.28 p.m., Tom Webster walked up to the police line in complete disbelief. Webster approached the barrier to voice his First Amendment rights. The officer reacts with aggressive shoving instead of de-escalation. The officer looks up at Webster's Marine Corps flag. Webster does not expect the officer to start pushing him. After looking at Webster's flag, the officer initiates contact. The officer pushes Webster. The push can be seen from several camera angles. The officer lunges over the barricade. The officer reaches over the police barricade, lunges, and pushes Webster multiple times. Several pushes can be seen at various angles as the officer lunges over the barricade. Frustrated by the officer's repeated escalation of physical contact, Webster pushes the bike rack. With the deliberate winds up, the officer punches Webster hard in the face with a gloved hand. Webster said that the punch hit like a freight train and he was seeing stars. The officer testified that he attempted to push Webster's shoulder and slipped hitting his face. Webster then reacts to the hit in self-defense, swinging his flag at the rail gate, never making contact with the officer. The officer crosses the gate to re-engage Webster. Webster is backed away from the police barrier and he reacts to the officer coming towards him. Webster waves the officer to stay away. Webster believes the officer is after him. 
the officer crossing the gate rail and grabbing the pole away from Webster. This officer initiated the physical contact. So Webster said he feels the crowd moving forward and feels pressure from a red-headed man behind him. Tom testified that he felt the need to defend himself. The officer rams the flagpole twice into the side of Webster's face and mouth. You could see the pole in Tom's face. Webster says he pushed up the officer's gas mask, but he did not strike him. The officer provokes, taunts, pushes, and strikes Webster in the face. So the officer testified that he did not make any hand gestures. The officer testified he didn't punch Webster, and he said that his hand slipped. This police officer didn't even file a report, a police report, and that he doesn't even remember the situation. The judge called it a touch, but when it came to the police officer punching him in the face, it was just a touch. Thomas Webster is your typical American hero, decorated Marine, 20-year police officer in New York City, unblemished record, and he's going to jail for 10 years for assaulting a police officer on January 6th. These are, you know, people that are here to stand up for the Constitution, for voter integrity. The type of guy who, law enforcement, military, that have a certain type, masculine, and have a certain type of mentality that aren't afraid to stand up to the government. On Thursday, October 13th, Thomas Webster is turning himself in for the next, to spend the next 10 years of his life in prison. It's just unbelievable. So I think that the one thing that people could do is continue to get his story out there and to um, fight to get these January 6th stories out there and just keep praying to God because in the end, God wins. What kind of government would put somebody like Thomas Webster in jail? Except the Biden regime. Only in Biden's America would they throw a decorated Marine in jail for 10 years for a 20 second scuffle with another police officer who didn't even want to testify in court, who says he wasn't hurt, who says he doesn't even remember the incident and who video footage clearly shows was never injured by Thomas Webster. The video evidence shows that this police officer actually punched Thomas first and he was never injured, nor does he remember the incident. But the Biden regime still persecuted this man, still persecuted Thomas Webster regardless, because they are literally, in my opinion, trying to use men like Thomas as an example to what exactly is going to happen if you dare stand up to the government. And they are trying to make extinct the type of man that Thomas is, which is a patriotic, red-blooded American man, military, law enforcement. These type of guys are at a serious threat in America right now because they're literally being made and used as an example by the Biden regime. So we have to fight for our fellow Americans, uh, whether we agree with them politically or not. And um, I think that every type cast of a person serves their function in society. And that's exactly why I think these type of men are a threat to the government, because they're actually willing to come together and stand up to the government. And uh, that, that goes for Thomas Webster. There has not been a single January 6th defendant that has been found not guilty of any charge whatsoever by a, D a DC jury, by a DC jury. There has been no judge that has granted change of venue, although many motions have been made by these defendants' lawyers for a change of venue, even to Virginia, 15 miles away, where they could get a fit more fair trial. So they don't want these guys to have fair trials. The Biden regime wants to have these constant, these verdicts, these guilty verdicts, so that they could say that there was an insurrection, so that they could continue to keep Donald Trump out of office. They are going to use it in the January 6th committee. They're trying to use it in the midterm election to push people not to vote Republican. So this is literally the, ter the perfect political persecution. If anybody wants to find out more information, you could always, um, the Gateway Pundit's a great resource, Newsmax is a great resource, and Citizens Against Political Persecution, which is the organization that I founded. The website is citizens citizensapp.us citizensapp.us, you could go there and you could find out more about political prisoners and political persecution in the United States. Pray for Thomas when he's in jail. Hope that his appeal is successful. Um, go consider donating on his gifts and go so he can hire a competent appeals attorney. Continue to get the message out 
that political persecution is wrong in America, and it doesn't belong anywhere in the United States of America. A decorated Marine that fought for this country and a 20-year New York City police officer does not belong in prison for 10 years for getting into a scuffle with another police officer at a political rally on January 6th. The punishment doesn't fit the crime, and that is what political persecution is, and we have to fight it at all costs.